Welcome to the next part. In this part I'm going to be um, creating the specular and normal maps um, based on the diffuse texture. Um, again, this is something that can be done in many, many different ways, but I've found, you know, after I've, been, I've created probably nearly 20 faces or something now, that this is actually the quickest way to, uh, to get the job done. So, to start with, what you need to do is to uh, e extract all of the uh, specular roughness for the same players that you use to build your diffuse texture. So in the case of the diffuse texture that we built here, we used uh, Walcott and Balotelli and um, Sterling. So I've already done that um, and they are here. Um, so Balotelli's looks like this. Sterling's looks like that and Walcott's looks like that now these look like they'll work very well because if you remember for Balotelli we used this upper area um, for Sterling it was sort of a general skin texture and for Walcott we sort of used this area here the side of the hair so what I'm going to do to start with is to create a new layer group within um, the PSD for the, the main diffuse texture and we'll just call this specular map and I'm going to start um, copying and pasting them um, the specular maps into uh, here so that's Balotelli I'll just rename the layer that's Sterling Walcott. And this is the most ridiculously simple thing to do, provided you've sort of done your diffuse texture in the right way. So put them in a similar order, you'll probably want Balotelli's texture at the top, Walcott's in the middle and Sterling's at the bottom. And basically what we need to do is, if you press control on your keyboard and click the layer mask that we use to create um, the, the divide for Balotelli's hair, then that will select the exact same area that Balotelli is currently used for, which is the upper hair. And then all we need to do is then apply that by clicking this button here to that sec section there. So what we have now is just that top section applied for Balotelli. And we'll do the same for Thea Walcott, which is this area here. So again, control and click the, the Walcott selection there. And then just click that to apply that selection. So we've applied that in the right area, the exact same area that the texture is currently being used. Now Sterling we'll just leave because that's actually a blank face which is exactly what we need for the next stage. So to do this next stage um, we will start by disabling the specular map and um, selecting a colour range. So for this colour range what we need to select are the darker areas of um, the face like the eyebrows and the sort of beard areas and things like that. So a selection something like that where you've got the eyebrows obviously selected you know the beard as well selected things like that is probably about right um, he's got quite light eyebrows so this might not necessarily work fantastically well but we'll see um, so I'm going to create a new layer in here and we'll call this Marshall's green layer now the way that um, specular maps work is the green areas are uh, matte and or dull and the red areas are very shiny so as you can see his nose would be very shiny here and his cheeks as well um, but the hair is obviously a matte texture because it doesn't have any shine to it particularly now um, what I'm going to do now is basically create an extra layer of green which will make that matte so I'll just pull the green from out of this solid area up here and just fill these areas in there and what that will do is it will give you a true hairline because obviously Balotelli's was a little further up it will also give us any eyebrow detail that we need and you know perhaps dull down the beard a little bit and you know we don't actually need certain areas to be affected so we can actually just go in and tone those down But 
that should be about right. And that's literally all you need to do. So from this stage, what we need to do is select um, all, use Control, Shift and C to copy, create a new document, paste it in there, flatten it, and then save that in our Marshall GDB folder as the DDS. Now, again, probably a good idea at this stage to make a backup of the specular roughness, so we'll copy and paste that, and then just save over the top of the specular roughness. Um, we're still saving as DXT5, so we're going to leave that on that. Um, for the next uh, map, the normal map, we'll only save it in a slightly different format, but for this, DXT5 is fine still, so we'll save that. And now that's our specular roughness complete. Um, I'll see you in game in a sec just to double check that that's working okay and that we're happy to proceed with doing the normal map. Okay so I've come into edit mode just to check that, um, that this specular map is working okay and you can see it is because if you look in the area around the back of the hair if I rotate around the model you can see that there's areas of hair that aren't being affected by the shine and that's a really good indicator that it's working okay. And again, it seems to be hitting the right places on the on the model. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think we'll uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, so the next thing to do is to do the normal detail map. Um, so I'll see you back in Photoshop in a sec. So in this part we're going to discuss how to do a quick normal detail map. Um, this is very much based on a tutorial that I found on EvoWeb and then adapted for my own purposes. Um, so the first thing to do is to be basically create a flattened version of your final diffuse texture. Um, so to do that just go to layer and flatten image, discard any hidden layers because this is exactly the image that you want, and then copy the layer up. So, and then you can hide that one. So, what we need to do is basically, you can download NVIDIA, the NVIDIA toolset and uh, find the normal map filter. I'll try and leave instructions for this on the on the YouTube uh, comments section, um, so you guys can find this easily enough. Um, so, if I just run the normal map filter, leave everyone everything pretty much as default. Um, this is all fine. I'll leave that up there for a second so you guys can pause it and, you know, do the settings to your liking. Um, so I'll OK that. And then the next thing to do is to enable the back, the, the other layer that we've created, and to basically do the same thing, but in this case, invert the Y. And basically, what that does is it changes the light source from being above to below. which is necessary for certain parts. So what we need to do next is um, create a layer mask on the copied layer. And then we need to scrub through with a hard brush that's not huge um, to the layers that we actually want to um, stick out rather than be pushed in. So as you can see, like the eyebrows we want to stick out these bits are fine. Um, this forehead section we actually want to pull in like that. Um, the upper part of the lips we want to pull out. The lower part we need to leave like that. Possibly the lower inner part as well. Just like that. The nose is fine, that's fine eyes are okay. Just check the hair. I think we probably want the hair to be reversed. Yeah, we'll reverse out the hair. And basically all we're doing at the moment is just checking that the normal maps are pointing in the right way. So when we come to actually see it in game it should work correctly rather than look weird and inverted. So 
that's basically it. That's your normal map. It's pretty simple. But worth doing. So now we'll go ahead and save this. Just flatten that. And then save as DDS in your GDB folder. And we need to save this over face normal detail, so I'll make a copy of that again. And save it over face normal detail. Now in this case we need to save it as dxt5 underscore nm and nm just stands for normal map which is exactly what we're creating so we'll save it as that and there we go um, so that's the normal map created I'm going to drop in game again so we can see the final result so here we are back in edit mode again um, it's very very difficult to actually see the effect of the normal map in edit mode um, I mean basically the good thing about going into edit mode is just really to check that nothing weird has happened so you know as you can see the the player still looks fine so um, I'm now going to go in game and just have another quick pan round and just decide if we're completely done here if we're finished here we are back in game so this is just to check that the normal map's working okay you can actually see a dimple on his cheek that's being picked up by the normal map um, I can't see any errors on the hair, it all looks fine. Must be a very small one there, but that can be fixed very easily. As you can see, now that we've got the uh, normal map in place, that everything just ties together. Um, yep, yeah, very pleased with that now. So. I am now going to go and fix that tiny mistake on the back of the head and um, I'll see you in the final part for how to prepare your file to get it online.